Welcome to Sports Connection. I'm Darren Joins, Williamson County Schools Athletic Director. I'm here with Mr. Tate Matthews. Tate, game one, week one is in the books for football, and what a week it was. It did not disappoint. Um, a lot of big-time finishes. A lot of big-time finishes. Most of them went Wilco's way, but not all of them. But, um, yeah, week one, some big uh, non-region games, um, some familiar rivalry non-region game. I think the one we're going to talk about first. But the weather was perfect. Uh, the crowds were great. And it's just so good to be talking actual results and scores again. It's very exciting. Well, let's jump right into those results. And we're going to start with the WCTV Game of the Week. The Battle of Franklin. Franklin wins 22-21 in overtime. What a finish. Coach Josh Adkins, week one as head coach at Franklin, week one as a head coach, yeah. and it ends that way. Man, what a way to start your career. And we learned a few things last week. One of the things we learned is Coach Adkins is a fan of the show. We appreciate that, Coach. Yes. Yep. And, you know, he was – he was talking about not only we didn't pick Franklin, but also someone had mentioned it was going to be double digits for Centennial, and it definitely didn't turn out that way. And I'll tell you this with his team, because uh, you can kind of feel this. You know, they've got those seniors with a lot of experience. Yep. Uh, obviously, they've come up short quite a bit the past few years. They're on a three-game winning streak, though. But when you win a game like they won the other night, you don't know what that can – can lead to Tate. Oh, I believe it 100%. And it's so they've been. We used to talk about it the, the the previous years. They've been in so many of those where they did not close it out, right? So yeah, I I mean the confidence level over off Hillsboro Road has to be through the roof right now. And he mentioned it. I know he's mentioned it about every time he's been interviewed. He said it at media day. He says it on the radio. He said it on the set at game day. Believe. He said it in the paper afterwards. Believe. You know, that's been one of the things that I think he's been trying to instill in them. Hey, believe we're going to win. Believe we're going to win. And I think they did believe they were going to win. And they did. It was really cool. Uh, I probably a little <laughs> – I don't know that he wants too many more of those uh, this year. That had to have taken a couple of years off of his life. But uh, so many – you mentioned off air there were so many things that had to go right for Franklin to win that game. And uh, they kept fighting. They kept battling. It was It was exciting, man. That was a – it was a great crowd. Um, that's a good place to watch a football game, man. It was just it was just a great night. Great well, win if you're an admiral. Well, let's do this because we've been kind of dancing around it a little bit. Let's take a look, and it's no surprise take, Correct. at the WCTV play of the week. Would you go for two right here, Coach Brees? Well, the, the, the rule of thumb is if you're the away team, you go for the win. If you're at home, you play for the, the next, the next uh, overtime. So... Field goal attempt here. This is going to be this is the first one. Yes, I was going to say. Try. Snap is bobbled. Oh, no, he's got a chance at it. Gaka. Call. He and they got it. it. They got it. He caught it. Sean Gaka, he did it. And it's pandemonium here. Holy the mackerel. Admiral charged the field. It was a broken fire call on the bobbled snap. Gaka hits the receiver in the back of the end zone. And just like that, the Admirals walk off two-point conversion, 22 to 21. Coach Brees, craziness. Well, the infamous or now famous fire call, DJ. Hey, I think he's cool with it because he's such a competitor and a great game. Gaka, that wasn't a bad snap. That was on the holder. But what does he do, man? He doesn't panic, right? They've practiced that many a times before. Uh, as impressive as the rollout in the past to Wills Jackson for the touchdown, the I, I couldn't tell who that number was, but the the evaded tackle that he had right afterwards, man, that was that was a heck of an athletic play. But to win on a fire call, again, that wasn't called from the sideline. That was a uh, uh, that was uh, something went wrong, and this is what we do when the extra point breaks down. It becomes the fire call. Everybody executed it great. And then that's a heck of a throw, man. I'd be looking at maybe a halfback pass. Maybe it's already in the playbook. But if I've got Franklin down the road, I'm, I'm looking out for Gacko on a halfback pass because he, he can throw it. Well, and what was interesting, I was on the sideline there with Coach Tigert, and we were talking. We both thought 
that Franklin would go for two. They did. They did. <laughs> a little different. Hey, let's go back to what we talked about before. And again, give Franklin credit. They never panicked. Yep. They're down 14 to six. Uh, I don't know, three minutes to go in the game. I think it was less. And uh, they've got fourth and long, throw the touchdown, but oh, wait a second. We got an illegal shift. We're going to back it up. Then I think it's like fourth and 15. What do they do? Same play, I believe, different formation. They score a touchdown and they get the two point conversion. All of that had to happen just to make it to overtime. So give Franklin credit for hanging in there and getting a big win. Uh, in Coach Adkins' first game as the head coach. I did want to mention Brewer, Brewer Wilson, two yep. touchdown passes, three-year starter, even started some games as a freshman. On the Centennial side, uh, Kanai Johnson, great game, eight receptions, 112 yards, a touchdown, and he scored the touchdown to give him the lead in overtime with a great catch, by the way. The snap was kind of off to the right, grabbed it with one hand, ended up scoring. So he had a great game. I'm telling you, what an atmosphere, what a finish. Battle of Franklin very rarely disappoints. Rarely disappoints. And remember, Kanai uh, uh, missed two plays because of cramps, came back in and made that. He has replaced Dominic Reed in that Wildcat package, or I guess they call it the Wild Cougar package, but you're right. Brewer played lights out. Uh, Jack Flynn was the one who did not get the – who had the, the touchdown reception called back. Uh, Gacka played very – played lights out did the two-point conversion, had the other touchdown pass. And then uh, Luke Thompson, who scored in overtime. And I thought, obviously, the two-point conversion was the play of the game, but I thought the interception he made in the first half, uh, if it wasn't that, – that was the most athletic play that I saw. That was – if you're a fan of defensive back play, the way he tracked that thing and got over there, covered a bunch of ground, went up one hand and got it, that was a heck of an athletic play. So, big win. And, and I thought the uh, – I know they're maroon, man, but anytime Franklin wears those smoky grays, I think they look really, really good. They look great. I love the stitched yeah. numbers. Tackle twill. Tackle twill. Uh, I think our audience would understand the word stitched. I, I know. I'm Better just, than tackle. I mean. Yeah, I know. We're giving them all the information. This is an information show, man. Riley Turner. Two touchdown passes yep. for Centennial, including a 65-yarder to Ethan Clary. Listen, Centennial will be fine. They'll be fine. It's an out-of-region game. I do think momentum-wise, it, it, it was – I'm going to say it's bigger for Franklin because, I mean, you want to win that game. Right. Both teams wanted to win that game. But I really think it's big for Franklin based on what's happened to them in the past to jump out 1-0. Yeah. And again, give him credit. Coach uh, Coach Atkins, we talked about it last week. You want to talk about energy. By the way, when when he was done with his interview on the um, – you, you, you were kind of that way. On the game so day I, set. When he was done with the game day set, I watched him. I wouldn't call it a sprint, but he ran. He got off that field and ran at least 80 yards, man. Like, And he was getting it. I, got, I think he drank a monster energy drink or a bang or something before – that guy's high. That guy's high energy, man. I love it. Well, hey, let's move on to this one. Uh, we didn't think it was a surprise because we all picked yeah. it, and I'm talking about you picked it, Dr. Qualls picked it, the fans picked it, I picked it. Ravenwood goes to Alcoa. They win 27 to 17, and honestly, those first nine points, if I'm not mistaken, for Alcoa were off Ravenwood turnovers. They were so Ravenwood. Is it fair to use the word dominate? They sort of dominated that game. Yeah, I think they did. Uh, Nine-time defending state champion, Alcoa. And a lot of people, you were talking about this. Going into the year, they were saying, this is one of the best five teams, regardless of classification, talking about Alcoa. Well, if that's the case, <laughs> the Raptors are at least fourth after that 27-17 win on the road. They, I don't, you know, hard to use the word dominating when it's 27-17. They dang sure whipped them. Um, they laid the ball on the ground. So all the positives will get the bat out of the way. They laid the ball on the ground three times and lost two of them. So if they don't do that, uh, you know, Alcoa is probably under uh, double digits scoring. So they, they, they lined up and they got after them. And, and you can really tell, you didn't even really have to see the game. You can look at the stats. They've, you know, Coach Esther's talked about it. I think 28 seniors. Uh, we've seen them in the preseason. They're very physical, but this is all you need to know. Maverick Chance had 15 carries, 
73 yards, three touchdowns. Those aren't long touchdown runs. That means they were long drives. They just lined up and came at them. Um, uh, they, they really got after them. The offensive line played lights out. Um, and, you know, and then Maverick had a, had a really nice game. He had a nice game passing the ball as well. Femi Babaloa, uh, three for six, 101 yards passing and a touchdown. And that's, that's something that I think people um, are misunderstanding. They keep talking about, well, this quarterback battle that's going on. There is no quarterback battle. They're a two-quarterback team. Two. Yeah, it's, it's two. Dose. It's not a uh, – there is no – well, neither one of them set each other – uh, set themselves apart from the other one. They're going to play both of these guys all year long, barring any sort of injury, which we hope doesn't happen. And, and I agree with it, man. They both – Coach Hester said the playbook doesn't change anything. They just both do things a little bit better than the other. They're both great leaders, and, and they, you know, they played lights out. So four touchdowns between the two, uh, the two quarterbacks, and they're the nine-time defending champion – they'll be the 10-time defending champion at the end of the year. But guess what? There's going to be a loss. Uh, there's going to be a, a tick in the loss column now because the Raptors – and again, going on the road, man, that's Eastern Standard Time. So you play – you know, you know you're know, you a coach. There's a lot of things that can th – that's a – The long pretty, bus ride. It's a long bus ride, man. You, you, you have to eat somewhere else. You know, it's – so – I think that also a big part of that was with the 28 seniors. This is an experienced team, and and uh, he's had a lot of big wins. He's got a state championship under his belt, right? He's got a runner-up under his belt. I could just tell from talking to him, man, he was excited about this one. This is this is one of the biggest wins in his long coaching career. Should have been excited. Uh, Max Kempel. Lights out. Big game receiving over 100 yards. And, now, and, and we're talking about stepping up. Everybody's talking about Donovan Starr, and they should. And everybody's talking about Ben Hubbard, and they should. Bam. Max Kempel comes in, three catches, 117 yards. Caught that touchdown from Timmy. Great game. And Love Max it. shoots the three very well. Yes, he does. Uh, Tate, you're going to like this. This is a good one. Uh, last week's Mama Hester, make sure she's not mad at us, it was a – it was a – Coach Hester losing Battle of the Woods, Jim. Well, this week's Jim, you're really going to like Miss Hester. First opening game loss for Alcoa since August 25th, 2006. They lose to Maryville 17 14. What does Maryville go on and do? They win a state title over Hillsborough, coached by Scott, Scott Blade. <laughs> Listen, that may be – That's almost 20 years. That may be – that gym may count for a couple that's of weeks. That's a good one. You did some digging on I that one. I dug deep. I dug That's deep. investigative. <laughs> I dug deep. What a great win. Big one. Hey, speaking of a great win, Brentwood 24-14 over Blackman. And, and it really turned out the way we talked about before. Don't count Brentwood out. Yep. They're down 14-3 in the third quarter. It's not going very well for the Bruins, but what do they do? They score 21 unanswered. They win 24-14, capped off by the big interception with less than a minute left. Uh, Jackson Allen sealed the win with a 92-yard pick six yeah. when the score was 17-14. I think that's a great win for Coach Finch and that inexperienced is probably the word squad. Yeah, well, they lost, what, they had 30 seniors last year? 38, I believe. 38, so you lose all those guys. But, they, they, you know, they're always going to have big senior classes. And, uh, you know, they were they were down 7-3 at halftime. They were down 14-3 in the third quarter. You know, and Blackman's, Blackman's getting better. They're an athletic team, you know, a Rutherford County 6A team. So, yeah, uh, they, found a, they found a way to do it. You, you talked about that. You've, you're pretty well documented on this show of, of – Brentwood teams usually find a way to win. And they're a team that kind of like what we were talking about with Franklin, they believe they're going to win. They expect to win. So did it a lot of different ways. Gavin Nelson had a huge night rushing and receiving. Um, Jackson's that, you know, any pick six is exciting, right? Uh, a 92 yarder one, which I saw it on the highlights. It was, that was a one, it was a heck of a play. And then two to get it back was, was a great job. And then, you know, JC White and Cannon Kinder, which we knew they were, they are still splitting time, uh, trying to figure that one out. And they'll both play. That, that one feels different than the than the Braves one. Yeah, someone is going to take that job. Someone's going to be QB one, uh, but they both did things well, and they needed them both to to, to get the win. So, and I, you know, also 
you, you talked about Jackson Allen, but they also had two other interceptions with Joseph Vaughn and Mason Ball. So um, they had a lot of it – was, it was a team win, man, you know. So th- we, we know that. They're going to look a little bit different offensively this year. Uh, but that's okay. Uh, the, the, you know, we'll, we'll focus a little bit more on the running game and get that defense up where it is. And oh, by the way, the three the three points they had in the first half was I think a forty four yard field goal. So as per usual, we're going to have a good kicking game. But yeah, this was a nice win, big win for them. Gavin Nelson, a rushing and receiving receiving touchdown. Yep. Uh, Page Giles County. You talked about this one. It was a my TV thirty game. Uh, the folks probably didn't do their homework like they should have. No. Because it was based on last year's overtime game and 35-34. Well, this was a snoozer. 28-0, <laughs> uh, Page with the win. First, two points away from a boat race. Man. Listen, first of what could be many, many shutout, yeah. shutouts. Now, talk about this night from William Weebush. Again, this, this is one of the things I love about high school football yeah. is because – Offense, defense, maybe special teams, depending on who you are. Listen to Wee Bush. Nine of 14 passing, 94 yards, and a touchdown at quarterback. He had 80 yards rushing and a couple of touchdowns. And oh, by the way, on defense, he had nine tackles. Yeah. What a night for Mr. Wee Bush. And listen, I want to make sure we get this in too. I know we're excited. It's one of our favorite places to go. Game day, Page Independence this go. week. Uh, I hate it. The good doctor, Dr. Qualls, is going to be on call. It just doesn't but, feel right. Uh, well, Mr. Pulliam will do a great job. But the Jolly. reason it doesn't feel right is because that was a location where the water bottle. Yes. There's been so many highlights. We need a highlight reel of Dr. Qualls' greatest moments at Page Game Days because, yes, the water bottle was <laughs> unbelievable. That was the that was the location of the first ever mention of the Mike Bobo <laughs> quarterback watch list. How can you forget the, the last time we were there? Uh, no, two times was the mascot. Met, the mascot that was about tore the set apart. Gosh, he was the greatest ever. The fly swatters. Do you remember him throwing the fly swatters? Yes. Remember he also it was off camera, but he form tackled the yellow jacket. He did. Uh, the SRO had to come over and try to. There was almost an assault case filed. Against the mascot. Then I looked hey, up, Paige. and he, he, the, the mascot was hanging out with, like, the head off. Like, you finally had like, to tell hey, him. man, you're not supposed to have the head off. <laughs> you finally told him enough. Hey, man, get off the stage. Yeah. We wanted he you, thought he was part of the show. We wanted you to be rowdy. Uh, exit stage <laughs> left. <laughs> it was great. The fly swatters were fantastic. So I hope they bring it again. I don't know what the well, theme will be. No, they had the fly swatter because they're playing Fairview. I know, I know. I'm saying I hope they bring that energy again. I don't know what the theme will be with the Eagles – but it's tough to beat those fly swatters. But man, they were, they were good. I, I just, I just hope they play that game. Again. <laughs> well, it's not going to be in twenty twenty four. No, it's not going to be in twenty twenty four. So great win for Page. Not surprising. Just get ready. They're going to roll, roll, roll uh, the entire year. No one's Ville, twenty four twenty one at Rockvale. Some thought Rockvale would win this game. They got the Georgia commit, and I'm telling you, don't count out Polly D. Coach Derek, Ever. No Owensville, what they do. They've got a great program going. Uh, they've built a tradition. Uh, tradition never graduates, so to speak. Landon Smotherman, again, sort of like uh, Wee Bush in terms of, uh, of having a game in different ways. Four receptions, yep. 25 yards. He was an all-region receiver last year, had a touchdown. But he had 13 carries for 78 yards and a touchdown. And listen, I thought they got good quarterback play, first game starter. Oh, no doubt about it. Yeah, and, and and they've got I think they've got four senior wide receivers. So Landon stepped up big this game. He's always going to be big, like you mentioned. He was all reason, but they've got three other guys that could do it. Jack uh, uh, Deaver uh, was sixteen for twenty five, one hundred sixty five yards, a touchdown, two interceptions. That's okay. It's all right. It's okay. We got the win. We're learning, and uh, that's a nice opening night. And um, Rockville six A team out of Rutherford. Uh, man, you want to talk about taking the air out of your balloon? They, did, they had their field dedication of their new turf field, the launch pad. Is that what mid- they call it? Uh-huh, the launch pad, because they're the Rockets. That's, uh, that's kind of cool. I like it. It's, it's up your alley. They did a good job marketing it. It's got a little logo over there. Uh, it was Military Appreciation Night. There's a long military history uh, tie with Rockville. Military Appreciation Camo Jerseys. Oh. 
I mean, it was a big night to be a Rocket, and then J.D. Coleman comes in with the game-winning field goal for Nolansville uh, as the game. Not, not. I don't think it was time expiring, but it was it was over. Uh, geez. Nolansville wins a lot of games late. Nolansville. They, they do. You know that. I've always said that. I think he, does, he doesn't like the camera. I think Paul Derrick is as good of a football coach as he is. Does a great anyway. job. Does a great job. Carson Kelly. Seven tackles to lead the defense. Summit, Battle of Spring Hill, sort of. You know, it's a one-sided kind of deal. Uh, 28-16, Summit over Spring Hill. Uh, how about Mr. Bell on the defensive end? Dude is huge. Six pass deflections, two tackles for a loss, a blocked extra point, and four QB hurries. Man, what a night for him. Uh, I, I, that wasn't really as close as a score. No. Looks. No, comfortable win. Yeah, for Summit. That was a that was a coach that is, that's a mature coach, right? A guy who's been through a lot of big games. Coach Coach Coleman knew what they needed to do. They got up big enough and played the guys that they needed to play. And hey, man, we're not worried. And you know, if, if we give up a few touchdowns, you know, if we give up a few points, that's okay. You know what I'm saying? We 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 saw what we needed to see and. And that's fine. And then maybe that keeps them playing the game too. You don't want to, <laughs> right? You know what I love too. You want to um, you want to keep them on the hook. A yeah, little of bit. course. All this talk about you know the new offense and we're flinging it and throwing it. <laughs> and then I look up and the stat, first stat that jumped out was uh, Braylon Thompson and Dylan Pierce combined for 225 yards rushing. Yes. They are going to run the ball. Well, the part that you didn't see there, or maybe you did, it's just in there, was McElhaney, the quarterback. He rushed it 21 times <laughs> for 83 yards and two touchdowns. Now, he was 10 for, not, 10 for 18 for 119 yards. But between Thompson, Pierce, and McElhaney, we were at almost 325 <laughs> yards rushing. Yes, we're going to run the right. football. I'm looking forward to the game this week, Summit Centennial, which we'll talk about here in yeah, just a second. A uh, couple losses, so we don't want to spend a lot of time on this. Independence, uh, 34-0. Uh, to Oakland, obviously Oakland, a great program. They get down early, 14 yeah. nothing. going to be hard to overcome. Also had three turnovers and very uncharacteristic. couple missed field goals, one that was blocked and one that honestly was a pretty short one for uh, Maeski, but didn't go the way they wanted it to. I did think Matthew Horner only threw the ball 10 times, but good for him to get kind of a game under his belt, and now he's got a face page. <laughs> Listen, he won't – and I know – their 6A program. But after week two, they won't face probably a better defense than they play in the first two no. weeks. No. So he'll be ready and to go. I, I think Ravenwood's defense is pretty it's, good. It's good. Yeah. It's good. But I'm with you. Pretty. I mean. Well, we talked about it at game day. I, I, don't, I think people need to know this. Not only is he a sophomore, okay? So he's a sophomore. He had his first start. He went 6-10 and 10 against Oakland. Coach, he's 15. <laughs> I, I, I was the talking. Bike rider. Yeah, I was talking to Coach Stidham. <laughs> I didn't get it, and he said, "He said, well, my my quarterback rides his bike. I think school. he literally rides it. Or he just wanted to get in. That he couldn't drive. No, I think he's being dead serious. And I said, oh, I, said, is he, I didn't get it. And I said, is he weird or something? He goes, no, he's fifteen. He can't drive a car. He said, what man? What does mean? He's, what does it mean he's weird? Well, maybe the man likes to ride a bike. No, I'm all hey, for it. Hey, I know I like another guy that likes to ride a bike. <laughs> But you don't ride the bike. The you didn't ride the bike today. Did, did work, did you? As far as you know, <laughs> this kid's fifteen and he's out there. Got the Oakland Patriots coming at him, man. I'm all in on Matthew Horner. He's all riding, in. And he's riding a ten speed to the field. I didn't ask that. As long as it's not like one of those thirty A bikes, we're okay. Okay, this one a total shocker. Two years yeah. in a row, East Hickman. 41-35 winner over Fairview. Very, very dis I know they're disappointed. Uh, I think they had circled it and said, hey, that's a one-time only kind of deal. We're going to make up for it. Give East Hickman credit. Uh, they do it for the second straight year. Uh, bright spot, Jax McCoy, 16 for 24, 320 yards, four touchdowns, only one interception. Uh, two of those touchdowns, two to Maxwell Arnold, two to Justin Nosko. Uh, only 44 yards rushing. That surprised me. Yeah, a lot of that surprised me. Well, especially when you got Trayvon over there. He did have 16 tackles. He, he was pretty active on the defensive <laughs> side. 16 tackles, man. That's a lot. It's a lot. That's a lot of tackles. Well, 
Yeah, obviously, um, I know what you're going to say, but obviously, apologies, Dee Stickman. We have totally underestimated. I wasn't going to apologize. I know uh, they are obviously better than what we thought. Uh, you know, bright spot. They did score 35 points, so offense was there. Got, but we can't rely on that pass heavy. Um, so, Coach Hughes will get it right. They'll get. But it. I know that's not one. He, that's no. not. That's not one they want to lose. They'll they'll get it right this week. Yep. Hey, we were going to do it last week. I know these sports have gotten started, but I do want to give a little bit of a rundown here of our other fall sports before we go to Pickham's cross country, <laughs> cross country. Brentwood. Now get this, Brentwood girls. Uh, they're seeking their fifth straight championship. Obviously, Miss Stegall from Nowensville thinks she'll have a shot to win that. The end. Future Florida Gator. That's right. I, I think she'll have a chance to be the state champion again. Uh, Lauren Banavac, back for Brentwood. Gabrielle Sophia, Sophia Boutros, back for Paige. Those are some names. And then on the boys' side, I think Brentwood's going to win on the boys' side this year. I do too. Last year they were runner-up. I think they're going to get it done. Fielder and Vaughn, both back for Brentwood. And then Asher Oates, back for Independence. Golf, Tate. Let's take a little bit of a look at golf. Uh, District 12 AA, we got eight Wilco teams plus Columbia Central and Spring Hill. Page girls and page boys will be hard to beat. Now, we said that last year, too, and they were, but you turn around, you look up, and Brentwood's winning the boys' title. They've got a lot to say about that. Uh, you you think page girls are you, – are you almost willing to say they're gonna write win. it in pen? They're going to – pen. Pen. And I'm not talking – uh, what was the uh, the race? Was it a racer mate back in the day? Yeah, not an eraser mate. No, I'm talking like legit. <laughs> like that pen you're Wilco <laughs> Awards <laughs> pen. Uh, they're they're going to win. Should have won it last year. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, but uh, until in, you know, what does Ric Flair always say? What did he, what was he famous for saying? Until you to be the man, you have to beat the man. Till somebody beats Brentwood Golf, I'm going Brentwood Golf. You like the Brentwood boys, boys. and Paige yes, girls. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Some individuals. Paige, Brooke Bennett, Gabby Diaz, who was a Wilco winner last yes. year. Uh, Ravenwood, Holly Hake, Wilco finalist. On the boys' side, Will Penson from Franklin, yep. maybe our best individual golfer. Uh, Jake Eikhoff and our man, Chubbs Wise. <laughs> so great. I mean, it's the best name ever. <laughs> Brentwood, Jack Doyle, Sam Johnson, Wilco winner. Uh, also back. So we're very strong as always in golf, and we have a lot of individuals back uh, who were Wilco finalists last year. Yeah, we need to so take it's gonna the, be fun. We need to take Sports Connection back to the golf tournament. I think we do too. I, I got a lot of text messages. To, I think we do too. Of disappointment that it wasn't there. We need to be there. It may be time. It's time. Uh, let's talk a little soccer. Uh, District 10 3A. It's basically. The Wilco League. Yes. And then here's what's in No Owensville. It's it's gonna be strange. No Maddie yeah. Padelski. And I'll say this too. Uh Ravenwood, kind of like Brentwood on boys golf. Ravenwood finishes sixth last year. Franklin's like the team all year long. Ravenwood makes it to the state final. Now Franklin's draw, they would have probably made it if they'd been on the other side of the bracket. But Ravenwood, Coach Mancini and what they're doing. Until somebody beats Ravenwood at the end, we yep. got to be talking about Ravenwood. There's certain coaches and certain programs that just have a knack for the postseason, right? Like Mr. May used to, and I, I think that's Coach Mancini and the Lady Raptors, man. They just do. But hey, on that girls' side, especially uh, Independence, Summit, Centennial, they've all gotten better. Uh, Paige obviously has always been good. They were just in a division below, but I mean, there there is no give me. Um, there's no gimmies right there with those eight teams. Uh, and in 2A, Coach Sizemore and Fairview, they've got a nice squad too. Yes. I'll right, just talk a little volleyball. 10-3A, again, it's the Wilco schools minus Fairview. Nolansville, Brentwood. That's as far as you need to go. I know it's a great league. There's a lot of great teams, but those are the teams. Uh, Coach Young, maybe a surprise to some. They finished sixth in the league last year. They take it all the way to the state championship. What a run. Brentwood, they end up being a semifinalist. Oatsvall for Brentwood is back. Knox is back, the Wilco winner for Nolensville. 
I think the title goes through Nolensville. You do? I do. I really do. Oh, you like Brentwood, don't you? I can tell. Yeah, I do. Because of Oatesville. Well, she's a big part of it, yeah. But uh, I, I was just sitting there thinking, think of all the great volleyball names we've mentioned through the years, right? And Knox and Oatesville, they're up there. They're they're in that – they're up there at the top. I'm not saying – you know what I'm saying? They're Those are two explosive – uh, fun teams, to, uh, players to watch. But yes, I, I think Nolansville Brentwood's. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll make my right now. My opening AP number one spot goes to Brentwood. Yes, I'll say this: they're both in the state tournament. I'm, that's good enough for me. All right, let's do our pick'em state. So we were all six and two. We were all six and okay. two. So you were six and two. I was six and two. Got to record this. Doctor Qualls was six and two. The fans were six and two. We all missed the same game. Okay. Or they get same games. Fairview, East Tickman, Centennial, Franklin. It'll be interesting to see. This could be separation week. It'll be interesting to see how we're we an early lead. Uh, and by the way, out there, you guys keep voting. WCSCO Athletics on. You want to pick? I'm, I'm give you a choice. You want to pick first or second? Your choice is what. At the end of the show, if you ever watch the credits, it says executive producer Darren Joins. It's your. I show. want you to choose. You want to pick first or second? I've got first. The, okay, first Brentwood at Brentwood Academy. Brentwood gets the win last year. Listen, most of the pundits are saying, "Don't worry about it." Circle Brentwood Academy. They've got the win. What do you say? Uh, Saw Brentwood Academy up close and personal. They've got some really good looking, really good looking players, and and they've got some holes, man. First year head coach, I think they kind of have an identity problem. So anybody who thinks this is a pick BA and it's it's easy, uh, I think you're incorrect. I picked them wrong last year. Uh, Brentwood got the win. I think Brentwood's still trying to figure this quarterback thing out. So I'm going to pick Brentwood Academy. But I hope I'm wrong. Begrudgingly, I'm going to do the same thing. And the reason I'm doing it is because of the location of the game. If that game's at Brentwood, I pick Brentwood. Really? I think the home is the difference. Uh, Get there early. There's not a there's not a visitor side. I really detest making that pick, but <laughs> I'm going to do it. We don't have to do it. Well, but... hey, man, I. I yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't like. This one was tough. I think this is close. Here's the first pick we're going to have different. Game two, Centennial hosting Summit. I'm going with Summit. I think it's a great matchup. I think it's a great battle. I think Summit, kind of like Franklin with the older. Summit's got some older kids now. Different Summit team this year. Now listen, they were they made the second round of the playoffs and lost to Brentwood. But they're, I think they're ready to make a jump. I'm going Summit. Against a really good Centennial team. You make a good case. Uh, actually, I'm going Summit. Oh. I agree. I think I think Centennial's going to be fine. I do think, you know, we know that. There is a difference in 5A and 6A. Uh, and I like this Summit team. I, th- I, think Coach, I think Coach Coleman's got his staff the way he wants it. And I think he's, again, man, I think he's getting to do – uh, some things as a head coach that he hadn't been able to do. I like this running game. Uh, I think that Centennial right now, early on, could have struggled with the running game. So I'm going Summit. So it wasn't different? No. Well, game three. I think we'll probably pick the same here, too. Fairview hosting Waverly. Your pick, Tate Matthews. Uh Waverly was really good a few years ago. I don't know what's going on over okay. there now. Um, Coach Trotter. You're, you're, you're not picking. They're, they're having arm wrestling accidents over there and stuff. I'm going. Where's the game? Fairview. Fairview. Uh, I'm not I'm not predicting boat races, <laughs> but I am going to go Fairview. i got to keep notes on this. I agree, Fairview. But I think it's going to be a blowout. I know we sort of jinxed them last week saying that with East Hickman. My fault goes. But they got back on the boat last year after getting losing to East Hickman. This is they'll get it right in week two. Fairview. All right, here we go. Franklin at Franklin Road Academy. Again, I think this is a tough one. Last year, blowout. FRA rolled. It was at Franklin. Now the game's at FRA. This is a fourth quarter game. 
<laughs> it's a fourth quarter game. I feel uh, uh, okay. Begrudgingly. Really? I'm going to say it's FRA. Wow. But it's a fourth quarter game. Okay. Fourth quarter game for sure. Uh, FRA was loaded last year. Loaded. Uh, I don't think they have a quarterback. Okay, they beat Kenwood Week One. Do you know where Kenwood is? They're terrible. You know that? Do you know? Well, well. Side note: It's like forty-four nothing. They built a flipping gym, and it's not even long enough. It's not even technically. It's not even a regulation <laughs> gym. So that win means nothing to me. I'm telling you, uh, I'm going Franklin. I think Franklin gets him. I think you didn't call me and ask me, Coach. If it were me, I'd run the ball at him because I think you can wear him down. But I'm going. With the Admirals. Coach Adkins? I can't pick a team that has the road across the front of their Coach numbers. Adkins? I hope he's right. I just I just can't do it. But, you know, the game I'm kind of looking at, it's coming up soon. Franklin Indy. Oh, Franklin Indy and Franklin Summit? I mean. Yep, there's some, there's some great games coming up. Franklin, I'm picking you, just not yet. Uh, Page Independence, WCTV Game of the Week. Now, people forget this. Independence won last year in – Triple overtime. Triple overtime. Yeah. In that series, Page won the first game way back several years ago. Six in a row for Indy. They're six and one in that series. Coach Rathbone's 0 and 4 in that series. That being said, wow. Page versus Indy, who do you have to? I wouldn't think Rathbone's 0 and 4 against anybody. This is a game that needs to continue, by the way. I, 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 think, I, think, I, it really like I think it will. Who you got? Oh, by the way, is game day going to be there? Yeah, that's right. We'll game day's going to be there. Uh, man, the, the best defense any classification in Wilco is uh, the page. Patriots, Hazard, Ains, all of them, right? But I'm telling you, that, that, that safety in the back, Weebush, whew, man, he's so physical. Um, so I'm going with the – I feel sorry for our man, uh, Matt Horner, because you saw Oakland's defense. Guess what? You're getting ready to see a better defense. <laughs> I'm going with the Page Patriots. I agree. Going Page. No Owensville hosting Antioch. First home game of the year. Antioch's improved? Yeah. Uh, Beat Lebanon in week one. Arcente Broom is the head coach now. No Owensville Antioch. Is it my pick or your, your pick? pick? It's my pick. <laughs> well, uh, listen, I'm, I'm disheveled. Uh, no Owensville. Okay. I think they win. I, I don't. I don't want to make a double digits prediction because last time that got me messed up. I, I do think they win. You've got a double digit one coming here next. It's 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 a touchdown or more though. <clears throat> no one's felt. Okay. Final answer. Final answer. Uh, Antioch threw me for a loop with that. Not only with the with the Lebanon week win win. The Lebanon got, week I, one win, the way they won threw me off a little bit. I'm a big fan of Coach Broom, uh, and they've got a quarterback named Andre Adams. He's legit, man. Uh, so, that being said, I rarely do this. I'm going with Antioch. Wow. Yep. Okay, so we got two different picks. Yep. Final one, I mean, it doesn't matter who picks for Ravenwood at King. And I heard Coach Hester on your show this week. You know, they've won a lot of games, and it's special. That was when Eddie Woods was there. Eddie's not. This that's kind of like beach basketball used to look, win a lot of games. <laughs> they don't know more. Th listen, <laughs> this is going to be an absolute blowout. Yes. Blowout. It, I, I think. I mean, it, it's, a, it's a boat ride. It's, it's your pig, but. If Dr. Qualls wasn't going to be out of town, uh, he'd be over there eating popcorn in the third quarter with Dr. Vaden. This is boat. This is popcorn city, man. Ravenwood big. Big. Uh, we get to the third quarterback. It won't in this be game. as big as it could be because he's going to pull them off. Is that what you're saying, sir? We're going to get to quarterback number three on this night. We might get to quarterback number four. Man, look out for Ravenwood. They got a squad, man. They got a squad. So we're, a squad. we're both going Ravenwood. Both going Ravenwood. Ravenwood to roll. Tate, so we got two different games. Listen, I hope, I hope. That you're right on the Franklin game. Run the ball, Adam. But I hope I'm right on North that. and South. No one's full. Any they don't like that. Private school boys don't like North and South. <laughs> I know. 
Tate, always great to be here with you. Hey, man, this is this is exciting. I cannot wait for Friday. Um, I hope the I hope the Patriot Nation, if that's what they call themselves, I hope they come out full force. They'll I know they will. And, and it'll be. Know, I don't know where that mascot is, but if he's if he can come home for the weekend, I'd love to have him. He was fantastic. Hey, you know what might be the story of the night? She's already mentioned it to me. The home principal, Doctor Hill says, "I'm ready for Doctor Patton." Because oh. Doctor Patton's a good job. No, no, I was getting ready to say that the, bo- those two principals. Dr. Patton brings it now. She does. I mean, and don't do anything during the week to make her mad or she'll really bring it. But Dr. Hill brings it too. I got a pretty good idea who gives her her information, and he's good at that. He, he may or may not have an office near her up in the up in the front office. But didn't, didn't she say something to Dr. Dyson one time, like, what was your record as head coach? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she absolutely was torching. Yeah. He was caught off guard by that. It's like, those two bring it. So those, nice. those two are the ones right now. He's so. such a gentleman, and she just stuck it to By him. the way, man, is he not the best dressed? Again, he Friday is. night. That guy. If, the all if white. drip is still the word, Dr. Dyson has the drip. No for doubt. Sure. Tate, always good to see you. Yeah, man. Can't wait to see you next week. Thank you for joining us for Sports Connection. We'll see you next time.